Hello, hello. Oh, we are live. We are live. Just now? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Wanted to make sure that they didn't hear me saying all those other things before. <laughs> hey, we uh, hit a thousand or three thousand. Yeah, okay. we did. That's awesome. Big milestone. Big milestone today. Yay. Fantastic. And how is everyone else doing? Melanie, welcome. Patrick. Uh, I'm I, I'm going to mispronounce this, but Roztek? Roztek? I, I don't know. New in the stream? Oh. Uh, Melanie, we Feel free to you. correct us on your name. We will see you later if you have to hop out. No worries, no worries. Maddie, Vem, and Methan, welcome. Today we are speaking about the man, the myth, the legend. Serious Buck. Favorite scapegoat, Serious Black. And uh, I think Serious, this is this is a weird one because. Dumbledore and Snape are definitely grayish characters where you can feel one way or another about them. But I feel for the most part, the majority of people like Sirius. I think Sirius is a lot of people's um, uh, one of their favorite characters. A lot of a lot of people really love Sirius. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, I love vomit. Sirius. He's one of my favorite characters. He's one of my favorite characters. Always has been. That's why I guess we'll have to do a little devil's advocate today to kind of. I mean, argue against. We could just uh, create a little conflict so this doesn't turn into a uh, Sirius is such a butte. <laughs> <laughs> he's just so great I mean we could do that that's fine I'm sure there'll be some devil's advocacy in here though based on some of Sirius's more questionable decisions oh yeah 100% <laughs> he's made some interesting ones he was cruel during his school days but suffered a lot in prison yeah. Lola, what's your deal over there? I mean, even... You cry in an awful lot over there. I kind of want to hold off a couple minutes so everyone who wants to get in can get it. No, we, we get yeah, we, too deep. But, we don't uh, have to um, go school right days. Into... School days is a really gray area because, you know, as a teen, they're doing pranks and everything. Mm-hmm. It's a... Uh, might not necessarily be cruel. Well, I guess some of them turned out cruel, but was malice intended? I mean, he did some pretty bad things because he was bored. Yeah. So, hi, Katie! Hey, Katie, welcome! Yeah. That's we'll, true. we'll get it. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get all up in there in, in a little bit. We just want to let everybody, give everybody some time to to hop in. So, all right. How about we start it like this? So, you think he's an awesome character. I think he's an awesome character. Why don't you tell us why you think he's an awesome character before we start getting into more of the statistics and details to say whether he is a character? I think... He's actually a very complicated character when you look at him. I think he is a manifestation of, number one, a tragic Greek hero. Mm -hmm. Number two, he is one of the most influential father figures that Harry has and teaches him some very valid and important lessons mm. um specific ones that say he doesn't get from lupin or dumbledore or even snape 
Like, he gets very specific lessons from Sirius. Um, I think Sirius also is a really great demonstration of how recovery from mental illness is not a, a clean cut easy road to to go down yeah so those are the those are the big nuggets of why i think sirius is great okay why do you think sirius is great um Probably just because, other than the Snape thing, a lot of the, the, I guess, evil things that may have been, he may have been accused of doing, mm -hmm. were never anything really caused by him. He was just kind of in a wrong place, wrong time mm -hmm. type thing. I also love how just deeply flawed he is mm. and it's his flaws that are his undoing so sad so sad and he's funny and he's handsome other other big points he's those are other that points. serious black smile that's right How no could one hate that no one could resist it <laughs> i don't think anyone could resist it uh, J.K. described him and James as bullies, not only to Snape, but to other children. Now, did J.K. herself actually describe them as bullies, or was it just from the text? Because who was it that tells... Well, I mean... Uh, does Lupin ever tell him that they were bullies? Like, no. Harry infers it from Snape's worst memory... Lupin, and I, we do know that they did bully Snape. Lupin, like that is guaranteed. Yeah. But whether or not they did it to other children, children, I don't know. Or if Maddie is saying, yeah, she, yeah, she did. Oh, she did. Okay. All um, right. I don't need to even pose my argument for that then. I would think it's very clear from the text as well. Um, but Lupin pretty much kind of. See, I always pic I pictured them more of Fred and George. Not yeah. necessarily bullies. They kind of... Like, kids may have been uh, victims of their pranks, but there was never, like, directed towards them. Other than Snape. Other than Snape. I think... Well, um, maybe Slytherins, but... Slytherins in general probably yeah. got it a lot. Um... Snape, Sirius, Katie says Sirius might have been a bully to Snape as a child, but Snape continued being a bully as an adult, whereas Sirius didn't behave that way as an adult. <laughs> well, they it's... they both had very different experiences, didn't they? That... I guess so. They did. Their lives went in totally way different directions, way different consequences for their actions. Well, in way different directions, but they did start at about the same, growing up in uh, neglectful, abusive households. But there was there were marked differences there between those households. Well, yeah. Snape Sirius grew up... Pure blood. Right. Sna Sirius had this pure blood... Are we getting too far ahead? Do we have everybody here? Because now we're getting into it. No, I think I think okay. we're getting into it now. Sirius had a very privileged upbringing with a huge amount of expectations about who he was supposed to be because he's a black. Mm. And Sirius spends the entire time defying all of that, right? Snape grows up in an actively abusive household. No money, very poor. The dynamic is different, and Snape doesn't do what Sirius did. Sirius has just this innate 
fire within his being to say, F this, I'm not doing this. I'm going to go do the other thing even harder because what you want me to do, I'm going to go do the other thing. And I'm going to do it way harder in your face. And that's not who Snape is as a person. Snape doesn't do that. He kind of suffers in silence about it and it just... They're just not the same person. And then Sirius finds James and Remus and Peter and pledges unfounding loyalty to them. And but Snape and Snape, Snape has, finds well, Snape finds Balsaba and all the, the Death Eaters and pledges. Well, first Snape finds Lily. Okay, yeah. First Snape finds Lily, and that and that runs its course. Mm. Um. Oh, hang on. She said they pranked, were stuck up, arrogant, bullied Snape and others, her exact words. They were, Maddie, but now how much of their childhood are we supposed to impose onto their adult characters? That's where I feel we get the waters, Muddy. Alistair says, hello, hello. Sirius hates everything about his family, including everyone but him being in Slytherin. Everyone but him being put in Slytherin. That's true. I actually have a point about that. <laughs> and if we want to go down that road. Um, I think, I think Sirius's influences were a lot more positive and supportive because he had James, mm -hmm. he had Remus, he had Peter, and he had James's parents That's true. that were able to guide and support him. And as James grew out of his arrogance and his bullying Sirius follows suit with him whereas Snape does not have those influences in his life he loses the one he had and then he gets sucked down that awful dark rabbit hole of death eaterness that's true and then Sirius and Snape both experience the deaths of these people that they love more than anything through the consequences of their own actions. That's true. I think, uh, I think a good, this might be a good segue for this. So I think a lot of people would like to blame, you know, Sirius's family and stuff for how he became, which he kind of is, but in a different way. I think we see the two dynamics with Andromeda and Sirius. Like, Andromeda wanted to get away from the family. Yep. And Sirius, you know, defied the family and wanted to get away. Yep. But Andromeda, I think, wanted to get away more than she wanted to defy the family. You know, she was just like, okay, I'm done, I'm leaving. Yeah. Sirius always had this, like, drive to... Stick it to him. Kind of burn down his family house, you know? Yeah. He wanted to just stick it to them. And I think a lot of that is the reason why his stubbornness is really why a lot of the bad things that happen to him does happen. Yeah. Like, take take his imprisonment. He's so... Sirius is so dead set loyal to his friends he will do anything for his friends he will die for his friends he will illegally become an animagus for his friends he will literally do things you probably shouldn't do if it means helping his friends yeah so then he says peter should be secret keeper and then all the shit goes down and instead of going to dumbledore and explaining what happened, and explaining he's not the secret keeper, Peter betrayed us, blah, 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 blah. His intense pain and loyalty to James, he can't even, he can't sit by and let somebody else do the job. He's got to go get Peter. He's got to exact revenge. He's got to, like, avenge James for all of this because it's his fault that they're there in the first place. Mm -hmm. And because of that... All those muggles get blown up. Sirius gets framed for the for the everything. And it's 
that quality in him that undoes him every single time and ultimately mm. leads to his death. Because yeah. he does the same thing with Harry in five. He can't sit by and let other people do it. He's got to go save Harry. He's got to go get him. And it just it ends badly every time. It ends very badly for him. Um, it's, that, it's that stubbornness. It's that passionate fire. It's that extreme loyalty. It's it bites him in the butt every time. Yeah, 100%. Oh. And yeah, uh, that's true. Sirius did hate the whole pureblood thing before James, so James didn't have that influence on him. No, because the Potters didn't think that way. No. They didn't have a pureblood mania but that I think, Sirius grew up with. I think everything after that, he, uh, uh, I think James influenced. I think so. I think uh, the Marauders was a way for him to... Uh, kind of focus his anger on the pure bloods and doing the pranks and that potentially. Thing. Oh. And he and we don't really know we don't really know what um can we briefly talk about how great creature was once we got to know him? <laughs> we'll uh, talk we can talk about creature. Yeah okay. creature's a Let's... big part of it. Why don't we use that as a segue? So we kind of talked about why he is good in spite of what he did. Because uh, his dedication to his friends. Mm -hmm. um, but what about the things that make him a bad person? And I think there's no way we can talk about that without speaking about, about Creature. Creature and how he treated Creature. His relationship with Creature is one of the more interesting dynamics about his character. And it's funny how we we get that line from Sirius in book four when they're talking to him in the cave where he says, um, you know, judge judge a man by how he treats his inferiors. Mm -hmm. Don't don't judge a man by how he treats his equals. Equals. Judge him by how he treats his his inferiors. And then we get to book five, and he literally is so awful to Creature. He's, <laughs> He's <terrible>. so terrible. <laughs> He's so, so mean to him. So that could be <laughs> just a huge one <laughs> when we think about why he's bad. Like, he, he kind of gave the game away himself. <laughs> I don't... I really do believe... And this is a personal opinion. I do think that Sirius did not have it in him. I don't think he was capable of being kind to Creature. I just, I don't think it was in him. It, much in the same way that I don't think it was in, It's. I don't think it was possible for Snape to ever be kind to Hermione. I don't think Snape was capable of ever being nice to Hermione in the same way that I don't think Sirius was ever capable of being nice to Creature. I, it just, he's a physical manifestation of his childhood and all of that business. You know, Creature's talking about his mom all the time. My mistress. Oh, mistress, blood traitors in the house. You know, like that must yeah. have driven Sirius absolutely up the wall. I don't think he could bring it in himself to be nice <laughs> to Creature. Yeah, but, you know, he still says that, and, and then it isn't that you gotta be nice to him, it's that you don't be mean to him. Um, he was pretty mean to him. Mike also says, let's not forget that he was not nice to his mom's portrait either. I, no, I feel, he wasn't. I feel like that's... Justified. justified. That's very <laughs> justified. We don't, see Cre we don't see Sirius treating other house elves badly. It's just creature he can't stand. That's true. Yeah. I, like, I'm sure if Sirius met Dobby, he'd probably be nice to him. You would think. 
I wouldn't see. But is he just traumatized from all house elves <laughs> because of creature? Um, or maybe after he finds out that uh, he almost killed Harry <laughs> multiple times. Multiple times. I, I think in the instance of creature, it's that he's literally a living, breathing embodiment of his household. And Creature is literally probably saying things all the time that Siri has heard growing up. That's true. Like, Creature says that awful shit all the time. My not blood traitors in my mistress's house. If she knew what her son was doing... Blah, 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 like... A little bit, I guess, in Sirius's defense is... Creature does not help his case very much either. Okay, touche. <laughs> you got me there. Um, yeah. Don't get but me still. wrong. My mom is one of the most unpleasant people you could ever meet. I still love her and respect her, though. Sirius couldn't say the same. Y no. Yeah, pretty much. Because I don't think he... I think he was just too different and... Honestly, she was a horrible person. A horrible person. But that being said, we do only get Sirius's side of, side it. of it. So um, maybe she wasn't quite as bad as he uh, well, says, but from the portrait, <laughs> kind of confirms it. <laughs> um, also, uh, Dumbledore said that Sirius was kind to house elves in general, but Creature reminded him too much of the house he was desperate to get away from, especially since he couldn't leave. That's that's, that's also true. true. Sirius had to be in the house with Creature 24 hours a day and couldn't leave. Surprised he didn't just feed him to Buckbeak. You know? <laughs> yeah, like, not only is Creature this physical manifestation, but then also... Sirius is suffering from some extreme m mental issues. Mm. Isolation, depression. Isolation, depression. I'm sure he has PTSD. Oh, yeah. Some, some kind of, but the depression and the isolation, the emotional, he hasn't had the chance to mature over the last 12, 13 years. Yeah. Um, and finally he's out, and he has this chance to mature, and they just lock him in with Buckbeak. Yeah. So... One of Dumbledore's worst decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean... Yeah, it was. It was not a good choice. No, definitely not. You know, even if you're gonna, say, lock him up, like, find a different place... Chamber of Secrets would have been better. <laughs> Chamber of Secrets probably would have been better. <laughs> you know, Chamber of Secrets is free now. There's no basilisk in there. Nope. Nope. Just, you know, you just gotta get used to the damp. And m multiple members of the Order of the Phoenix would have been right there to keep an eye on him. Exactly. Although Harry, they'd have to have Harry open it up every single time they needed to go down there to give him any. Because Ron figured it out. Well, that's because Ron pays attention and has heard Harry do it enough times that I think Ron could effectively mimic it. But it makes me wonder, so... Oh, no. Oh, oh never mind. What didn't help was Dumbledore basically imprisoned Sirius with Creature without care of the mental damage it would cause. Yeah. Are we experiencing buffering? I'm not sure the wizarding world on the whole thinks much about mental health. No. No, they don't. If they did, Cho would have gotten counseling after book four. Yeah. Because she needed it. <laughs> um... I think the thing with Dumbledore is that uh, he didn't think about it much. I think no. I think so much else was going on that Dumbledore said, this is what we're going to do. And I don't think saw writing on the wall of of what 
the potential consequences of doing that to Sirius could be. Yeah. Um, Hello, I'm, Dan. Hi, Dan. Yep. Yep. Hopefully it... Hopefully it corrects itself. Oh. What? Now we're just gone? Uh, I'm waiting to see. Why does this always happen when we do a discussion about the characters? I don't know. What's going on right now? Sorry, guys. And we're, let me guess, we're fine on Twitch. Well, let's see. I actually don't have Twitch open. Oh my lord. Hang on, guys. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're fine on Twitch. Of course. Of course, of course. I was just streaming earlier oh. and I didn't have any issues. We're still here. Okay. So, all right, we're still here. You're good now. All right, okay, so cool. Good. All right. I guess let us know if you guys have issues. <coughs> We can try, like, restarting the stream or something. Yeah. If it gets too bad. Okay, good. Yeah, it's just going... YouTube YouTube just doesn't like us today. I guess not. Uh, wow, totally okay, derailed so, us a little bit. Yeah, so where were we at? What were we talking We were kind of talking about Dumbledore locking Sirius up. Okay. Oh, man, and I had a point about that, but then that happened, and it kind of uh, took away my train of thought. Okay. I think Dumbledore didn't like Sirius. I think he held his past against him. Dumbledore likes to play favorites. Oh. Mm -hmm. Shots fired in Dumbledore's direction. Maybe. I think Dumbledore... I think uh, Sirius as a big potential liability. Yeah. Or maybe uh, Snape, you know, got into his mind a little bit. <laughs> Snape. <laughs> well, we know he can do that. Yeah, you know? yeah, we, yeah. That's one of yeah. the best, so. It's true. I'm pretty sure Dumbledore, though, could probably block that. But I don't know if maybe he can't block Snape. Because Snape's the best. Why That's... did he tell Harry to go to Snape? Yep, Snape is the best. That's true. Snape is the best legilimens. Next to uh, Voldemort. Yeah. Maybe he did. Crept into Dumbledore's mind a little bit. Yeah. And said, no, 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 no. <laughs> We're not going to do that. <laughs> um, Katie says, I'm not sure Dumbledore plays favorites. It's an equal playing field on the chessboard. Buffering. Oh, God's sake. Ah. <sighs> I want to talk about this chessboard thing, but I can't. I know. I'm holding this thought about the chessboard till things work or don't work, whatever it decides to do. Oh, somebody said something. Oh, okay. Still buffering. Still buffering. Oh, jeez. Oh my god. Ow, Jackson. What's going on with your foot? Hang on, let me look at your foot. Looks like it's just his nail. His sheath is still yeah. stuck. <sighs> I wish I could see how much data is getting uploaded. Like, how bad is it? Right. That's all it says. <laughs> Maybe we'll we'll do this. I think uh if we're just going to try to restart the stream. So restart that. <laughs> now can I Are we still streaming or no? Yeah. Mike says it's working fine. Maddie's like, it's not working for me. 
All right. Why does it not copy the thing when you try to do it? Because that is not our... <laughs> Are we currently on or no? Yeah. Okay. We're on Twitch. Yeah. Okay. Oh. oh, and Katie's like, okay, you're back. All right. Um, I'm going to hold off and we'll see. Uh, you make the decision. This is not my wheelhouse. You decide what to do. All right. Let's just, we'll hold off. Okay. Let me see. Did I just make another one? Okay. Are we good? Apparently we're good. I think, I think we're good now. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Okay. Chessboard. Chessboard. Everything is a, everybody is a piece on the chessboard, right? Right. So to Dumbledore, it's not that he plays favorites, it's that one sacrifice your pawns. And Siri or um Sirius is the pawn. Snape Snape's the queen. No, Harry's the queen. Pretty sure. Or maybe Harry's the no. king. Harry would be the king. Nah, yeah. You gotta true. get him to checkmate. Yeah, that's true. That's true, and the queen is just going all over the place, all over the board, just ruining yeah. everything for everybody. <laughs> but either way, I don't think it's that Dumbledore plays favorites. I think that in the grand scheme of things, Dumbledore didn't consider serious and saw him as a bit of a liability however through dumbledore's actions he created an even bigger liability by what he did to serious it's true uh but oh my god um you just threw me off there sorry uh yeah how can everyone be used for Dumbledore's endgame? Yep. Where does he need to put where? Who does he need to put where in order to... And maybe it was... Just to achieve had the no... Ends. Maybe Sirius wasn't even a pawn. Maybe he just didn't belong on the board at all. Like, he had his game planned out, and Sirius there would have just thrown a monkey wrench into his whole plan. Yeah, I don't know as Dumbledore was anticipating Sirius escaping Azkaban. <laughs> no. And and finding out that actually Sirius didn't do it. <laughs> and Peter Pettigrew is still alive and he did it. Crazy. Um, I that is a personal but opinion. Okay. Dumbledore did so. did do Sirius dirty. That's how I feel about it. He did. Brain's gone in so many different directions. What were we talking about dealing with Sirius? That got us to this point. How are we bringing this back? We started talking about Creature now. and yeah. being in the house and how being in the house was so detrimental. And somebody said Dumbledore plays favorites. That's right. That's right. Yes. And Dumbledore definitely does play favorites. Like, that's something you can't argue against. I see, KD would but, say um, that he doesn't play favorites, that everyone's just a chess piece. Well, agreed, but chess piece have more power than others, you know? So maybe not favorites, but favorites in the term of how much they he can need... do for Dumbledore. Right. A.K.A. Snake. So, you know. Not or like, Harry. You're my best buddy type favorite, but I could use you favorite. Yeah. A.K.A. Snape. Exactly. Harry. He's going to put more effort into keeping Snape alive than he is serious. Yeah. 
and more effort into keep, keeping Harry alive for now. <laughs> Until, <laughs> for now. <laughs> then serious. Or uh, Snape. Um, Dumbledore does admit, though, with became harder and harder with Harry because over the years he grew to genuinely become so fond of him and really came to love Harry yeah. and that it made it very hard for him. <clears throat> um, I would agree. Sirius is a liability because he's reckless. That because he just gets in his passion and his anger and he just makes decisions. Dumbledore don't like that. That's true. Uh, Dumbledore could have used Aquamancy to see if Sirius is guilty. Uh, I think we had this discussion at we... one point. Um, he, that's not really a good way to go because memories can be manipulated and yep. distorted. So, for you... for legal purposes, Aquamancy is not or would not be seen as a branch of magic that you would want to use in a court of law. To determine anything. Yeah. Plus, Sirius was just never given a trial. Yeah. Sirius did things Dumbledore didn't foresee. He had no idea. I guess he had no idea about the map until end of book four. He was a variable he didn't plan for. Yeah, exactly. He just... He didn't belong on his chessboard. It was going to throw off his entire plan. That's pretty much it what was, I think. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't necessarily that uh, Sirius wouldn't have had a place, but Dumbledore just didn't want to go back and figure everything else out yeah. around Sirius. Or, or try to rely on Sirius to play this part because Sirius is very impulsive. And Sirius has been locked up in Azkaban. I mean, Dumbledore doesn't know what he's really capable of at this point. Yeah. And that's another thing. Sirius was locked up in Azkaban for 13 years. 12 years. 12 years, sorry. Um, Katie says, also, Dumbledore has no reason to use legitimacy because he thought he was guilty. That's true. Dumbledore literally had no reason... To try to use legitimacy or even try to further investigate because based on the events as they occurred, Sirius was guilty and there was no reason to further investigate anything. Yeah. So Dumbledore just went with it because there was nothing else there to lead Dumbledore to think something else had happened. <clears throat> And might be another reason why Dumbledore didn't bring Sirius on, because he might have thought that Sirius was a little salty that Dumbledore didn't do more to see if he was guilty or not. Mm. Dumbledore just kind of sat back and, yeah, he's guilty. He ruined everything. Yeah. <laughs> but if Dumbledore could trust Snape, why couldn't he trust Sirius? I think it comes back to that Sirius was in... Azkaban for 12 years he was around Snape he knew everything about Snape for 12 years so he knew uh he could probably tell whether or not Snape was you know lying or if uh something he knew Snape's abilities and he wouldn't send him on anything too dangerous that was beyond his abilities serious he had no idea well, like, number one, he, he sent hasn't Snape had... on plenty of super dangerous things. But I'm sure he had an understanding of Snape's abilities and wouldn't have sent him on any mission that was he beyond his capabilities. capabilities. Sirius, you have someone who knows magic to the degree of someone who just graduated Hogwarts. After that, you know, he hasn't been able to practice magic for 12 years or do anything yeah <clears throat> and he also just doesn't know what Sirius is about he knows he's not guilty but he doesn't know like what his mental state is at this point or what he's doing well he does know that his mental state can't be in a very good place because he's been around dementors for 12 years yeah the other thing too is that Dumbledore knows that Snape is loyal because he knows Snape's secret. 
That's true too. And He's he got that. and he understands Snape's secret on a personal level because he and Snape share the same pain. Mm -hmm. They both cause the death of the one person, or in Dumbledore's case, his family, that they loved more than anything, and it was destroyed because of them, and they both spend the rest of their lives atoning for it. But that is no, why he... I, but that is the crux of why he trusts Snape. He, but that isn't good as a defense against why he didn't trust Sirius I'm because Sirius had gone there. through the whole thing. I'm getting there. Okay. So he's he he knows innately why Snape is doing what he's doing because it's why Dumbledore is doing what he's doing. They're linked in that way. Sirius <laughs> has just gotten out of Azkaban. <coughs> Dumbledore orchestrates the events to save his life with Harry and Hermione, right? Mm -hmm. And then Sirius is on the run, and then Dumbledore finally decides, oh, well, Sir Dumbledore, I think, at that point feels like, okay, Sirius is free, we've, whatever, and then all of a sudden we get, oh, but we're going to reform the Order of the Phoenix. We need to use Sirius's house. That'd be the perfect place. So then he pulls Sirius back in, and beyond using his house, I don't think he wants to do anything with Sirius because Sirius is too volatile. He doesn't know who he is anymore. I'm pretty sure Dumbledore probably understands, too, that the man has spent 12 years in Azkaban and might not be the most stable person. I don't think Dumbledore thinks that Sirius wouldn't be loyal or would betray them. I think it's all about Sirius being extremely impulsive and not in a good mental state to do what Dumbledore would need him to do. Because Sirius has demonstrated his his greatest strength and flaw is his loyalty to his friends. Mm -hmm. and Dumbledore knows that. But the, that's not the issue. The issue is the impulsivity and the mental instability. I think. Okay. Well, you didn't really touch on what I was going to say. Okay. You were saying that uh, Dumbledore and Snape both say that they're the reason why they lost the person. That yeah, they... yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Sirius did the same thing, though. He blames himself because the person he loved the most, being James, mm -hmm. died because of his actions. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, like... W right. The difference is... Sirius spent 12 years in prison. Yeah. Sirius is incredibly impulsive. He's not mentally in a good place. I'm just saying that the first part doesn't really add up for why he didn't... Why he trusts Snape more than Sirius. That's all. But yeah, well, the, the fact Dumbledore that he hasn't is... had 12 years to uh, see what... To kind of feel Sirius out I think that's is a big, big thing. Yeah, I think that's a He's a wild card. card. Yeah. Um... Snape and Dumbledore are mirror images of each other in a lot of ways and have had a lot of time to develop that trust in this and that. And then Sirius is just, yeah, it's, it's, I think, a good way to put it. He's a wild card. Dumbledore just can't count on being able to predict what Sirius is going to do. Yeah, like, like Katie said, he formed a relationship with Snape and understands his uh, motivations. Uh, Dumbledore giving him a wand. I mean, I don't think it's that Dumbledore didn't necessarily trust him with a wand, perhaps, but to go out on this, like, a, a mission where you have to watch each other's backs. I mean, are you going to want to go out with someone on this deadly mission who has been in prison the last 12 years and hasn't practiced magic in that long, you know? Mm. Or that you're going to trust that that person is going to follow the mission exactly to the T that Dumbledore needs you to follow it so that everything works Uh, 
um, so that everything goes exactly according to plan or somebody who you can't trust to change the plan, make a split second decision because some shit happens. And then all of a sudden it just, the, we're not doing the plan anymore. We're doing this, mm. you know, it's like Sirius strikes me as the kind of guy who, if he's going to go on a mission and do a thing and it's supposed to be super covert and, and secretive and this and that, and like something happens Instead of maintaining cover, Sirius would be the guy that says, screw it, and goes out all guns blazing, blowing the cover, fighting everybody, and um, then it just, whatever was supposed to happen doesn't happen. I think that's what would happen, and that's why yeah. Dumbledore's like, we can't do that. He Leroy do Jenkins that. it. Yeah. <laughs> Just Katie, Dumbledore I... trying to explain everything, like, all right, so we're going to go in, we're going to do this and this. Don't worry, guys, I got this. Whips out his wand. That's Spelly Armus. I think that's exactly what would happen. <laughs> I think that's what Sirius would do. Um, to answer your one question, Katie, I don't know if Dumbledore gives him a wand. I mean, I know he has one. I don't know if Dumbledore gives it to him specifically, yeah. you know? Um, he was yeah and yeah Katie's right he never had the chance to most emotionally mature because of Azkaban how old was he when they went what were James and Lily 21 mm -hmm. so James and Lily were 21 so Sirius was arguably 21 so fast forward 12 13 years uh, he's still, like, 21. <laughs> yeah. Just in a 30-something-year-old body. Mm hmm That's, that's terrible. Um, but that does explain a lot of why he acts the way he does, I think. That's true. I think another aspect of that is going back to what I talked about earlier, is that he never wanted to just get away from his family as much as he wanted to defy them. And I think that's another reason why he is the way he is. And I think there's definitely like an underlying theme. Sweet.